All right, today we're gonna to look at how to bring in a scan. So in this case, I have a scan of my face and the scan was already converted from polygons. So from a point cloud, it was already converted into NURBS using the Next Engine software. So I'm gonna be starting from a surface model of the face and then I'll just show you how to clean it up, uh, put a frame around it and then put some tool pads on it and cut it. And we'll end up with something like this. So to get started, you would go into File, New Design from File, and this is where I can bring in the, in this case, it's an IGES file of my face. So again, if the scan you have is, is a mesh or polygons, that's a little different process. This is gonna assume that you've already been able to convert that into surfaces. And we'll go ahead and pick this and open it up. Okay, once you've got the, model imported, you can move it around. You can see it's actually kind of off in some kind of weird orientation. We look at um, versus the coordinate system here. So there's a couple of things I wanna to do to this. The first thing I'm gonna do in this case is, you can see it's actually, if you look in here in the bodies folder here in Fusion 360, you can see it's actually still 2000 surfaces because uh, each one of these, from the software that I used to create this, it made them all individual surface bodies. And you'll notice if you're working with something like this that it, it the performance is fairly slow just because you're having to calculate this. And what we're gonna want for creating a smooth tool path is to just really stitch this all into one body. So first thing I'm gonna do is switch over to the patch set of commands. And then under modify, I'm gonna select stitch and then I'm just gonna drag a box around everything. Or select from the folder, it's probably the easiest way. And now that I have all of that selected, I'll select OK. And after about a minute of processing, uh, we have now you can see I have just two bodies here. So one and two. And we could look at this one on its own and see that this is just some sort of miscellaneous twisted artifact. And I'll just go ahead and select this, delete it. And now I'm left with uh, just what I want, which is the overall scan of the face. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna uh, rotate this model so that uh, the face is looking up in the Z direction just to make everything easier uh, when I model it. So to do this, the first thing I'm gonna do is switch over to a kind of a four view. So I can either get that from down here or there's a shortcut, shift one. So now I'm looking at like the four or th three orthogonal views and um, kind of an ISO view. And you can see this thing is whole, this whole thing is like pretty, uh, out of out of whack. So I'm going to come in, grab modify my move command. I'll select this body, and then I'm going to set the pivot on the origin. So I'm going to select the origin point. That gives me something that's like really consistent in X, Y, and Z. And now it's just a matter of looking at the four different uh, viewports. Oops. Um, you want to make sure you say OK to set pivot. Now you want to rotate this around until you get it. And this is just really just kind of an eyeball thing. Um, you know, this is why I like to use the, the four viewpoints. So just trying to get this thing looking. And again, you can always like reset the pivot. So I'll go again, I'll set the pivot back on the origin. So I get the pivot to be back to um, orthogonal to these directions. So you can see looking in this direction, that looks pretty good. In this direction, it's a little off. So we'll go ahead and come up here and rotate this down to try to get it as straight as possible. And you know, again, this doesn't have to be perfect, but it'll look, it'll be a lot easier to deal with and easier to work with if you're working from um, something that's already oriented nicely. So again, I'm happy with this orientation, happy with this, happy with this. I think this is good enough to uh, say good. So we'll say okay. 
And now we'll switch back to a single viewport. Again, you can do that down here or shift one. And now I've got this thing oriented uh, nicely with my uh, coordinate systems. Again, this is just something that makes everything else a lot easier. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a shape to kind of define exactly how much of this I wanna use. I'm gonna kind of trim it out to sort of get a symmetric uh, cutout around the model. So I'm gonna start by creating a sketch, create on this plane. Now I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw one line to kind of represent my center line of the face. Again, this is just something you want to get as close as possible to what looks like the center. Doesn't have to be exact. Um, and now what I'm going to do is create a spline just inside. Here's a nice trick. If you go over to the bodies, you can right click on this body and say selectable, unselectable. That way it won't be trying to snap to it while you're sketching. So I'm gonna create a spline. And again, I'm gonna just try to get kind of just inside sort of a symmetric boundary. This is just totally up to you. Depends on the quality of the scan and where you wanna cut it off at. I think right about there looks good. Select OK. Here's another little trick too, which is to draw a couple of more construction lines. So I'm gonna draw a horizontal line there, and then another one right here. And then I will make this line tangent to that line and then the spline tangent to that line and that'll give me basically tangent uh, symmetry here. Um, now I could go in here and I could mess with these points and drag them around a little bit just to get uh, maybe the exact shape that I want to cut out and then finally I will mirror this line this line about this Okay, and if you want to, you can take these three lines and make them construction. Although it's not really a necessary step, it would just make things a little cleaner later. So now this is going to be basically the profile that I'm going to actually cut. And we'll use this piece of geometry now to um, trim away. But the first thing I would typically do is just take this and extrude it. So we will extrude this profile down so that we have like a full intersection. You can see when this scan was done it was actually there's a back face to it. So we want to use this new extruded surface to trim away the old sur the excess parts of the surface that we don't want. So to do that I'll come into modify trim. Before I do that though if you remember, I made this unselectable, so we want to just right click on this and say selectable again, because um, obviously we're going to need to be able to pick it in the trim. So I'll say modify trim. The tool is going to be this piece. And then what do we want to remove? We want to remove that and this. Again, depending on the nature of your scan, it might be different. You might only just be removing some outer um, excess here. In my case, I also had to remove that extra bit on the back. And afterwards, you can kind of see the result. By hiding that, you can see now this is a, just what I have left. Much cleaner uh, face model. Now it's all cleaned up, and now I can use this. Again, if you were going to do 3D printing or carving or whatever, this is like kind of what you want to get to. And then now it would be a, now it's about modeling up some kind of structure around it that this is going to be embedded into. So the easy way to do that, um, in this case, I'm just going to take, I've already got this kind of sidewalls 
Now I'll go ahead and just quickly create um, a patch, which lets me just close off the bottom of this structure. And then I'll use another nice feature here called a boundary fill to select this, this, and the top. And what this will do is basically just create a solid geometry as opposed to what we're working with right now as surfaces. So I'm going to select my cell, which is this center bit. It's going to create a, a solid as opposed to a surface, um, which will make it easier for me to create um, more of like a true solid model out of this. And there we go. We can hide some of these bits of construction geometry. And I just now have the one solid body. The last thing I might want to do is just take this. I could take this face, do a move, and maybe just drag this up. So I have just sort of a solid, just about the thickness and depth that I would want. Just a little more. This is going to be essentially the profile that I use to do any uh, further operations. There we go. Okay, so the next part is really up to your own sort of creative interpretation. In this case, I've got a nice 5 by 5 by 2 block of wood that I got from the woodworking store. And I'm going to Car I want to carve this out of that block. So kind of the easiest thing to do here now is to just say I want to create a box in Fusion. And I'm going to make this 5 by 5 and then by 2 block. And now I need to position um, the face up into that block. So I need to probably move it and then scale it. So we can do this in a couple of steps if we want. I'll start with a, actually let's start with a move. So I'll start by moving it. So we'll grab this um, body. And again, we can look up here from the top. And sort of get it close. Now I need to scale it. So we'll go in here, modify, scale. And I can just sort of estimate this. Three point six. Actually, it looks pretty good. And then we'll do another move. Okay, remember set the pivot on the origin if it ends up kind of at a weird place. And then we can move the face into the model. That will actually scale looks pretty good there. Um, so that looks good. And then we can look at it in this orientation. And I'll move it up, you know, kind of wherever I want it to be inside the stock. So again, this is nice viewing here so we can see uh, just where we'd want it to be positioned. So the other thing that I did um, for the one that we're going to cut is another cool feature in Fusion, which is if I go to the Sculpt environment, and then I'm going to create a plane. And we could do this really, um, really anywhere. We'll just create on this face. And then I'm just going to create a plane that's a little bit bigger than my geometry and where it says length and width I will probably make a three so we can make this three by three if you want to you can make it the exact size of the box but sometimes I think it's easier to just kind of overbuild it so I'll say okay and now um, I'm going to modify this and I can double click to select everything I'm just going to bring it down a bit and now at this point, what I want to do is I want to uh, want to kind of hide this body so that I can see where this is relative to the face. I think this is a good, this is probably a good starting point um, down here. So maybe let's even go a little lower. We could just start from the bottom. Yeah, that's, and then we'll work our way up. So we know that we're a little bit 
lower than all the curves. So that's pretty good. And now, so you deselect. Now, what you can do is you can just grab these points and drag it around. And what I was kind of trying to do is make sure everything stays below these the line of this curve. It's going to make it uh, machine pretty nicely. But I wanted to give it this sort of cool relief effect uh, of dragging these up. So you can just keep modifying this as necessary. And you could play with this quite a bit. You could add more. Uh, I did a three by three plane. You could add more uh, points. You could have made it a four by four or five by five or something, which would give you just more definition so you could make a more uh, detailed cutout here if you wanted to. Um, you'll see, I'm gonna flip over to the one that's already done in a second here and you'll see the results, but so for now, let's just leave it as is. That's We'll call that good enough. Say OK. can show this body again. And now what we're going to do is come back into uh, our model environment. And then we're going to say split body. And we will split this. Our splitting tool is this surface. And now you can see the result by hiding and showing these things. So we can hide and show again. You have this folder of bodies. You have all the bodies. And now you can see the result is uh, here. The last step that we would probably do just to, for consistency would be to come in here and do a combine. And we will say the target body and the tool. And we want to join them. And now the result is one single body of the face with this kind of cool relief. And there you go. We're ready to do CAM. All right, so now that we have our model, we're going to go ahead and set it up in CAM to get toolpaths. So we switch over to CAM. The first thing I'm going to do is create a setup. Uh, when we select the model, it's going to try to guess the stock size that I want. So we select that body, come over here to the stock. We're going to go five by five by two. And then the only difference is that we want to take the model position. And I'm going to say I want to offset from the bottom zero inches. And you can see that that gives me is the stock set up here. If I wanted, one of the things you want to do is, especially in the Z, is go ahead and take a really accurate measurement, grab a pair of calipers. So in my case, it was exactly 2.085. Uh, this will help to make sure that you have really accurate uh, tool paths. And then also in the uh, X and Y, um, if you need to tweak these values, uh, you can do that as well here. Uh, also on the setup, I want to specify my origin point. So for doing something like this where there's going to be a tool change, I'm going to do a flat and then a ball. I think the easiest place to do that is if you make your zero. So select here and then select here. Sorry, the box point there. This will allow me to easily find X and Y uh, zero location like at the top corner, but then I'm going to set Z off of just my work surface. And that way when I change the tool, I can reset Z uh, in Universal G Code Center or whatever really easily. Um, so this is again my preferred uh, zero location for doing uh, anything with a tool change. So now that we've got um, our setup done, we're gonna do, we'll call this, rename it, we'll call this um, 1 8 inch I like to name them the tool I'm going to use when working with the X carve specifically because it allows me to uh, make one kind of post process file for each tool I'm going to run. I found that to be the easiest way. So one eighth inch, and we'll call this flat um, roughing. And so now with this selected, I'm going to create a tool path. So in this case, I'm just going to do 
uh, 3D pocket clearing and we'll select our tool so I can go in I'm going to select flat end mill scroll down here um, you could have had set up uh, very specific libraries for just your tools in this case I haven't done that yet these are just sort of the defaults and I'll just pick um, some arbitrary eighth inch cutter it doesn't really matter if the links aren't the same because we're just going to be zeroing off the bottom of the tool we'll set the speeds um, you can punch in a specific spindle speed. In this case, I'm not doing automatic spindle control anyway, so we'll just give it some arbitrary feed, and then we'll give it a feed rate. Uh, for cutting, this was a pretty hard piece of wood. I was cutting pretty conservatively, I think, at um, 40 inches per minute when I did this, so we'll just keep that. I could probably go faster, but this will give me, this gave really nice results. Um, geometry, we don't really have to worry about anything here. Heights, passes is fine. This thing we want to do here in passes is set our step down. So in this case, it's just remembering the last thing I used. I was using, I was also using a 40,000 step down. I could probably get away with deeper. Um, when I was watching this cut, it 40 was, it was having no problem with 40. I could probably have bumped this up to 60. I know kind of a rule of thumb that a lot of people use is to make this step down half the diameter of the cutter. So if you're using an eighth inch, 125 thousandths cutter, you can go, say, around 60 thousandths step down. Um, let's just go ahead and do that for now. I will say that when I, the example that I show of it actually cutting, I was using uh, 40. And then finally, under um, ramp, you can use helix, although sometimes like in these little tight areas, it might have a hard time getting in there with a helix. So for just cutting wood with this tool, I just use a straight plunge, meaning the tool is just going to go straight into the material and not need to ramp in. If we're doing something really hard like aluminum or something, we maybe want to do that uh, helical entry. So with that, we'll say OK. And we'll let the software calculate the pocket. And there you go. You can see the results uh, of the tool path. And then if you want to, you can uh, simulate that. So we'll click on simulate. Sometimes I like to get rid of the toolpath, but then turn on the stock, and we can hit play. You can speed it up with this right here. And you can basically watch what happens as it cuts through this. And we can see the, the final result, which will be what we want, which is a nice like, stepped thing that will now come in with a ball end mill to finish. So the easiest way to do this, I because we want to copy the setup, what I do is I'll just select this and then do a copy, select operations, paste. This way the setup, all the setup information will be copied. You don't have to redo the setup. And then you can just uh, rename this to 1-8 ball finishing. And then we'll activate it by selecting this little uh, dot here, which will make it so we create operations in there. We can delete the pocket. We don't need to redo the pocket. But now what we want to do is we want to create some finishing passes. So when I did this, I did this in actually two steps. Uh, I did a parallel and then a spiral. So we'll start with a parallel. Select our tool. We want to use a ball end mill. So 1 8 inch ball is good. And again, we can give some generic feeds here. And again, I used 40 inches per minute. That's probably pretty conservative, especially for the finishing pass, but um, it came out nice. So really, the other big thing you want to change in here under passes is the step over. So again, since you know we're just carving this one of these and we just want it to come out really good, there's really no reason not to just give yourself just an absurd step over, some tiny little step over. Like I did the thirty thousandths, and um, you know it takes longer, but you know you're going to get like a really nice surface finish. Um, I didn't sand this at all after it was done, and. Um, that's it.
So you can say OK. Now it's going to calculate and you can see the result, which is just going to be all of these parallel passes um, over the geometry. And then I did another one too, which was a morphed spiral. So again, you can keep all those the same. And under passes, again, I set just a really tiny step over of like 30 thousandths. And what I found was um, the spiral gave, after it had done the, the parallel pass, when you do the spiral, since all of the lines aren't just totally parallel all over the face, it was a little, the finishing was a little more noticeable um, with the parallel, but with the spiral, since the kind of uh, changing directions, you can see that here, you ended up with like a little bit less obvious um, tool paths on the geometry afterwards. So again, doing both of them I think was a nice option. And then that's it. You know, you're really done um, with the cam. Now what I'm going to do is just select each of these. So I'll, first I'll select the flat roughing. I'm going to say post process. We're going to select the post processor. We want to select the generic Gerbil post. And then uh, in the properties here, there's one option to be really aware of, which is use G28. If you don't know what G28 is, and if you have not set um, a quote unquote, uh, I think they call it a home position or a, a neutral position or something like that, using G28.1 and specifically set that in your um, machine and if you don't have limit switches so you're not you don't have a consistent machine home basically if you don't know what G28 is you could go read about it and then set it up but if you don't know what it is make sure you uncheck this box make sure you do this because if you use G28 and you haven't set up a G28 position you will most likely crash your machine so again uncheck that if you're not used to it and you don't know what it means Okay, so I'm going to save this out now. I'm going to save this. We'll just put this uh, uh, here is fine. We'll call this face underscore one eighth flat. I like doing that again so that I know that that's the right, what tool this is for. And then it's going to let me edit and view the G code, which we don't really need to do right now. And then We'll do that again here for the ball. I'm going to go ahead and say post process. Again, properties. Uh, it'll remember this, but again, just to re-emphasize, uncheck use G28 if you don't know what that is. And again, we'll call this one face ball face one eighth ball. You also want to name it dot nc um, so that. Universal G Code Center picks it up as an NC file. Should have, uh, have to, I would have to go back in and rename that last one, face underscore one eighth flat. I'd have to rename it to dot NC for UGS to, re, to recognize it. Okay, once you come into uh, Universal G Code Center, the first thing you would do uh, is connect to the machine, which I'm not connected right now, but you would use the standard uh, method to jog X and Y, set your X and Y zero then move the machine uh, over a bit and then zero off of the work piece. Uh, remember, we're, gonna, we're zeroing off of the or work surface, I should say, the bottom of the part, essentially, uh, to zero the Z. And then we'll come into the file. We'll go ahead and browse, grab um, the uh, flat file, open it up, and then connect to the machine and hit send. Here you can see a picture of the block of wood set up. Here you can see me measuring the exact Z height to put into Fusion. This is the beginning of the roughing pass here. This is uh, the roughing pass done, so you can see all the steps. Here's me re-zeroing after adding the ball. Again, just reset the Z axis after putting the ball end mill on. Here's again a close up of the steps. There's the finished result. Another couple picks here of the final result.